Hey Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here and I'm here to do a different video than I thought I was going to be doing. Um, a couple weeks ago I saw in Fine Woodworking Magazine an interesting looking product which is this, the Easy Tension. It is a tensioning gauge designed to help you tension your bandsaw. Sent a message off to the owner of the company confirming would this work with the Shopsmith bandsaw. Now the Shopsmith bandsaw is unique, I think pretty special actually. And uh, the, the owner responded back that uh, he felt that it would. Well, I got it last week, showed it off on a YouTube channel that I share with my son, Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club, in case you're wondering, and, uh, and then set about using this. And uh, I even shot a video and was totally uh, unimpressed because it didn't work. Sent that video off uh, to the owner of the business and said, you know, what's going on here? And uh, after some bantering back and forth and doing some additional tests and trying different blades, we came to the determination of something that I've actually known for quite some time, and that is the Shopsmith bandsaw operates under lower tension than the average bandsaw. Most bandsaws, like I have a Delta 14-inch bandsaw, it uh, operates under 15,000 to 20,000 PSI, pounds per square inch. Um, we played around with this and determined that if I, well, first let me, let me show you that, how this thing is supposed to work. It's got built in these little gauges, and you take the hex wrench out of the end of the tool, and you adjust the length of the screw or how much it is extended using these little gauges. And you can see they have the size of the, uh, the blade printed on them. So this one, 14, quarter inch, three eighths and half, this one three quarter and five eighths. And the idea is when that is extended the proper length, you attach it to your bandsaw blade using the rare earth magnets that are there. You then tension the blade and when it reaches the proper tension, uh, typically the bottom uh, rare earth magnet will release. So let me show you. Um, here on the Shopsmith, the tension is adjusted right here and Right there, based on the gauge, which I've never had any issues with, it's properly tensioned. It hasn't released yet. Well, let's uh, take it on up a little bit. Ah, so now at the 3 8 inch setting, it has released. Now here's the thing. That's a quarter inch blade. You can see how much further I have extended that screw in order to make it release at that tension. So uh, we came to the conclusion that this, as it is made, is not really designed for the Shopsmith bandsaw. That said, I think it has great potential. Um, I can still use this once I've determined exactly where this needs to be positioned. It'll still function. Now, I already said I have no problem with this gauge. Why would I need this? Well, here's where I think this tool is really super handy. I'm going to go ahead and just attach this over here. Um, one of the things, early modifications that uh, owners of Shopsmith bandsaws did was we started drilling holes in the side of the cover. And in fact, today, the cover that Shopsmith makes not only has a hole here, but they've got a window cut here so that you can see the tension gauge. And the idea behind that is with the cover on after I'm done uh, with my sawing for the day, I want to release the tension. And regardless of whose bandsaw you have, if you store your easy tension right on the bandsaw, um, we'll take some tension off of here to make it ready for storage. Just a couple turns will do. And notice those magnets will now hold it. The next time I come out to my shop and I see that there, I'm going to know, oh, I need to tension my bandsaw blade. On my Delta bandsaw, not only will it be an indicator that I need to do it, it'll be there for me to adjust the tension. The Shopsmith bandsaw doesn't have to have this. I trust the gauge. It's worked for me for many, many years. And let me show you why. Most bandsaws have their upper wheel mounted on a shaft that is itself supported on the back of the bandsaw. The Shopsmith bandsaw doesn't work that way. The upper wheel is mounted on an arm. It's cantilevered over to the side of the body. 
And then here, that arm continues down, but as a big steel leaf spring, the edge of that spring is painted red. And when you get the saw brand new, or if you ever need to adjust it, what they tell you to do is to just take the tension off. And right now the blade is lowering, there's no tension here. And loosening that single screw, you align that, uh, that steel plate with the edge of the red spring. So none of that spring should be showing. And then when you go to tension this, and by the way, it uses the same 532nd hex wrench or Allen wrench that we use for all the changeover on the machine. You take this up until that red line disappears right behind the tension that you want to set it for. So that is at the quarter inch mark. Um, with the easy tension, uh, it, it went to actually the 3 8 inch mark, which is not at all bad. Uh, just a little more tension. Now, here's the thing that's interesting about this. This is an aluminum body bandsaw, and it's hard to get a ton of tension on a bandsaw like this. If that, that upper wheel is mounted on this arm, it wants to deflect as you tension it, which is part of the beauty of having this cantilevered over to this steel post that passes through the arm. Um, it is such a clever design. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll do a video or two on uh, how this bandsaw works and what makes it unique, but it is different than every other bandsaw that you've ever seen. In one major difference, you don't adjust the tilt of the upper wheel. The upper wheel isn't crowned. The upper wheel has a slight conical shape to it, just a couple degrees, and it's tilted a couple degrees. So when you put a blade on here, it automatically wants to run off of the back of the wheel. And so over here we have a pair of bearings that are the auto track bearings and the back of that blade just runs right back against those bearings. So that blade can no longer travel to the back. It stops at the proper position and under tension, you're not going to pull the blade off. Um, over on the other side, we never have to adjust our bearings forward or back because the back of every blade hits at the exact same spot. They all hit where these bearings are. So it's a very clever design, no tilting to adjust, no backup bearings to mess around with. Yes, we do have to change our guide blocks if we go with a wider or a narrower blade. We need to move those blocks in and out, and that's done by just turning a little, a little knob. It's a beautiful bandsaw, works very well. So whether or not you want to get yourself an easy tension, if you have a bandsaw other than a Shopsmith bandsaw, then go ahead and get it. I think you're going to like it. If you have a Shopsmith bandsaw only, you don't need this, but uh, I owed you a video on this and I hope you found that interesting. Make it a great day.